What's up guys, I'm Xavier Elon, your favorite future Facebook, Amazon, and Google software engineer. Today we're going over how many numbers are smaller than the current number. It's an easy problem on link code and let's jump right into it. So I just recorded this entire video and I realized my microphone was off, so let's do it again. Round two. So given in the array nums for each nums of i, find out how many numbers in the array are smaller than it. That is, for each nums of i, you have to count a valid number of j such that j does not equal i and nums of j is less than nums of i. So that's um pretty uh, confusing description in my opinion. So we just re return the answer in array. Um, what they're trying to say <laughs> is, just read the title, how many numbers are smaller than the current number? That's all you need to know. Um, this is very like convoluted. So how many numbers are smaller than eight in this array? Well, <laughs> all four of these. So we put four at the index where eight is in a new array, or actually we could do it in the same array. Um, so how many numbers are smaller than one? Zero. How many numbers are smaller than two? Well, this no well two is not smaller than two. So there's two, two. So we have to account for duplicates. Um, so there's three. There's there's three, one, and eight. So we put, um, no, sorry, there's only one. We're doing smaller than two. So we just do one. And that's it. So let's think. Um, let's go to the whiteboard. I'm going to pull it up. How would we, if this is our input, how, what's an easy way to calculate this? How many numbers are smaller than the current number? Um, why don't we just sort it? So if we sort it, we have, so sorted is one, two, two, three, eight. And then if we loop through all the numbers to the left, so all the numbers to the left of one are smaller than one. So that would be zero. Then we get to two. All the numbers to the left of two are smaller than um, the current number which is 2 so it would be one number smaller we just have to count the numbers this way but then we also have to account for duplicates so for this we would have to for this 2 we would have to count for this 2 so that makes it a little tricky and also just counting is that way is um, harder than it seems and we already just sorted it so that's already n log n time so let's try and think of something different we already have it here, but what if we just combine these two? What if we have a count instead of just sorted? So what if we create an array? So I'm going to do an array from, oops. So I'm just going to go from 0 to 8 because 8 is the highest value in this array. Uh, so let's do, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, so these are where we're going to keep a tally of how many of those numbers are in our array. 6, 7, 8. So how many, let's loop through the input. So let's start at 8. How many, uh, we just increment 8 by 1. Um, and we're just going to loop through. So we increment 1 by 1. So we did these two. And now let's do the 2s. So we have 1 and then 2 and three so the rest are just zeros and so now let's think how can we so how many numbers are smaller than the two well it's just the sum of all the numbers to the left of it so we just need to calculate the sums of all these numbers which is just one but an even easier way to do this if we do the sum in a new array so let's do that we just add the sums from left to right so we're going to have 0 still, 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and then finally 5. So this is 8, and this is 0, and 1, 2, 3, 4. So I, I don't want to fill them all out, but you guys, hopefully you guys understand that. And so then, now, when we go up here, we're going to loop through this array and find the corresponding value. So and then we just want to go one back. There's four numbers less than eight. Is that what we had? Um, yeah, so that's the correct number, four. We want to look one back. So we the eight is going to be, so let's fill out our output array. So we're going to match, now we're doing the corresponding index. So we already said four for eight. And what about one? Let's go to one. Well, the value to the left of one is zero, so zero and two. I'm just gonna go through this real quick. One, one, 
and then we have three so three is right here so let's grab the three there three and does this match our answer yes it does so let's just code that out now um, I'm gonna keep the whiteboard up so that we have something to look off of I know I didn't write pseudocode but I hope the visual helped uh, so let's create our output array or I'm not gonna it's not gonna be output it's I'm just gonna call it smaller and new int and so what we're gonna want to do is look at the constraints the value is from 0 to 100 so let's create a 101 array All right, so the first thing we want to do is we don't need to sort it. We want to do the tally. So for int i equals 0, i less than nums.length, we're going to just loop through nums and i plus plus. We're going to do smaller nums of i. We want to find, we want to get the value, and we're going to increment it. So, and now we have this array filled out, but now we want to create the sum. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, the only difference is we have to start at one because we have to calculate the sum with the one behind it. Um, so, so for this one, we're going to add this one to it. We're going to add these two numbers, but for zero, we can't go back. We'll be out of bounds. So we start at one. So I less than and another thing is it's 101 so we created an array this array actually goes to 101 I didn't obviously draw it out so that's why we're doing that and I plus plus so um, smaller of I is just plus equal to the number before it I minus one okay so now we're gonna loop through it one more time we're going to uh, reference these values from here to here and input them into nums. So for int i equals 0, i less than num. We're just looping through nums this time. OK, so let's grab the position. So we're saying the position of this. Uh, this is the position, technically, or the index e equals nums of i. So the one thing we have to account for is if the position is zero. Um, since we're going, we're going to check one before it. If the position is zero, we just want to write zero, set it equal to zero. So nums of i. And we're going to store everything in nums of i. We can't change the small array because we might have to reference it again when there's duplicates. So let's just change nums. We don't need it once we already set the value. We don't need that value anymore. Uh, and then else, um, so nums of i equals uh, smaller, so we want to go position minus one, so we got to go one backwards. And then let's just return nums. That should work. Submit it run it test it cool so it actually runs really fast 99% so it's um, linear runtime because we're just using for loop um, I guess you could say it's linear space complexity I don't really know because it's such a small array it's so limited um, I don't know if it would be O or of n or constant um, so let me know what you guys think about that. And if you guys have any questions, just leave some, leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. If this video helped, smash that like button. And that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.